I feel like everything you go through in life, whether it's people you meet or experiences you have, you may not recognize it at the time, but later on down the line in your life, you'll be like, oh, wow, that's why that happened to me then. So I could do this now. You're listening to Femcanic Garage, the podcast that features women in the automotive and motorsports industries, a community that elevates, empowers, and evolves by smashing stereotypes and breaking down barriers for women. I'm your host, Jamie Blossman. Buckle up for the ride, Femcanics. Taylor Ferns is in the driver's seat today. Taylor is an accomplished race car driver, law student, writer, race team owner, and businesswoman. She started her racing career at a young age and throughout her 20-year racing tenure has won numerous races, championships, awards, and set many records. Her awards read like a sizzle reel. Taylor is a United States Auto Club champion the youngest female driver to win a sprint car race, the first female to win USAC midget and sprint car races at many different racetracks. Now let's sit back and enjoy the ride. Hello, Femcanics. This is Jamie B coming to you, and I have Taylor Ferns in the driver's seat today. How are you doing today, Taylor? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing well. So I've been following you for a minute. We caught up a couple different times at different events and timing happened to work out well right now. So here we are having this conversation. And I told you in the pre-interview that your story fascinates me in that a lot of times when we look into the day job, of females that are race car drivers, you, you kind of see this very similar path along automotive or motorsports. It doesn't like venture too far off from that. Sometimes it does, but your story fascinated me because why don't, why don't we, we'll just let the cat out of the bag. What is it that you do for your day job? Yeah, so my day job right now, um, I just migrated from being an operations director at a well-known law firm, the Sam Bernstein Law Firm in the Metro Detroit area, into now I'm almost uh, like a student attorney, if you will. I'm more of a, a, in a legal role at a law firm, going to law school, still racing. I'll be back racing full-time uh, next season, which means like 20 plus races a year. So yeah, just do a little bit of everything. My favorite, all-time favorite question, and I think of my guests like when they were little girls and, you know, there's these stereotypes around what little girls play with when they're little and what they dream to be when they grow up, right? So I always like going back there and kind of in that space and headspace and ask, did you always know that you were going to be in motorsports? Yeah, 100%. I grew up, um, I come from a racing family of my uncles on my maternal side, uh, raced late models and stock cars throughout the eighties and early nineties. So before I was even born, but, um, in my family, we celebrated Daytona 500. It's like traditional American families celebrate the Super Bowl. And I just remember like specifically when I was three or four years old, Um, we were watching a NASCAR race, Jeff Gordon, Dale Earnhardt going around the track. And I remember just watching the race and just being like, I'm going to have something to do in motorsports. I didn't know what that was because at the time there were no visible females within racing. Um, but I was like, I'm going to do something in racing. I was like, I, I, I mean, I was a kid, right? Like basically a toddler. I don't know. Was I going to be a crew chief, a mechanic? And then here we are. I'm a race car driver now. So, um, yeah. Have you ever experienced anything like PTSD or anything like that? Like after you have an accident, trying to get back out on the track again and clear your head and be as aggressive as you were before? So I think if I ever had an occurrence like that, it probably was when I was um, 
like seven or eight years old. So just like a year or two after I started racing, um, I'd gotten into an accident, which this rarely happens, but it would happen to me. I broke my leg in a quarter midget accident. And so I was out of the seat for like maybe three or four months because I both broke both my tibia and my fibia to where I had to have surgery on it. And um, I just remember like for me, the PTSD was going to the track and watching my siblings racing and I wasn't able to race. And so that's where I had a really hard time. Um, But this is how this might give you an example of how like how much my parents love racing and maybe how crazy they are too, because I was leading the points in a certain division that I was in. And between the time that I broke my leg and the next race for that series, um, I hadn't really missed a race until I got my walking cast on and they let me race with my walking cast on. <laughs> Because it was my brake foot. And so they're like, oh, she's not going to need her brakes, really. <laughs> and I could still push to the point to where my car would stop. Like, I still had that type of strength in my left leg with my cast on. <laughs> and so they let me race. I ended up winning the championship. But after I came back from that, my dad, um, I didn't, I don't really like bringing my nerve levels, like, to the surface. Or I don't really say if I'm anxious or anything. But my dad did kind of say, I would never put you in something that you like could potentially like get super hurt in. So obviously anything greater than breaking your leg, I would presume. Um, And so I guess that maybe he was trying to bring me a sense of comfort, but I mean, it didn't really help. I just wanted to go out and race and win and whatnot. But now the irony of this is now he can't, he stopped saying that probably when I turned 14 because <laughs> um, no one really talks about the dangers of the type of open wheel racing that we're in, but it's obviously there. But um, I think all of us, like even my competitors say we love what we're doing. And I was actually thinking about this recently. I was like, this might be like a little extreme, but um, I went without racing for like three or four years and it was probably like the toughest time of my life, honestly, throughout college. And like, I would rather like have something like, it's almost to the point where like, I would rather die than not race again type of thing, because that's how strong, like my obsession is and my addiction is with racing. There's a couple things that stick out when I listen to your story, Taylor. And one of them is, which I think is what a great lesson in your story is that sometimes you have to take a step back and walk away in order Mm -hmm. to get back into it the way you had always wanted to. So here you shared earlier that the next step for you when you were 18 is really bigger money bigger sponsorship that's needed to go to that next level. Mm -hmm. You took a break from it. You got your undergrad. You started working at a law firm. And correct me if I'm wrong, but they're one of your main sponsors. Is that right? Yeah, no, for sure. So talk about how life comes full circle, right? Um, And I think at the end of the day, like reflecting on it, like I always kind of talk about like I'm a big into cliches, like everything happens for a reason. Rome wasn't built in a day. Like I always am like giving this off to like these philosophies off to my friends and stuff like that, just because I so believe it's true. And I also talk about a lot, like the foundations of life. Like I feel like everything you go through in life, whether it's people you meet or experiences you have, you may not recognize it at the time, but like later on down the line in your life, like you'll be like, oh, wow, that's why that happened to me then. So I could do this now, you know? And so I just feel like when I was younger doing the things that I did working with Lynn St. James and then uh, racing up until I was like 19 and having the experience at such a young age to live on my own and gaining those kind of life skill sets and then kind of going off and getting my education. And now I'm working at this law firm and now they sponsor my car. Like, it's just like so crazy how all this stuff has like happened it, to me at such a young age and how it's benefiting me now. And I'm still, I just turned 27 last week. Like I still have, I, I hope a lot of time left on my car to, to just see where all this leads to. Um, 
just because like I just said before, like the foundations of life, like everything that I've learned growing up has gotten me to this point. And um, like growing up, like my parents used to always say, like my parents recognized that motorsports was my passion before I even really, I feel like realized it. Um, like when I was 12, like I remember my dad saying, yeah, like we do this all for Taylor because she's so passionate about racing, like racing is her passion. And I thought to myself, like, I didn't even really know what that was like, not to sound ignorant, but I was a preteen. Right. And then, so I just did it because it was what I loved to do. Like I realized at the time that that's what I love to do. And I had already sacrificed so much time into doing it. But then after like I took some time away and I was still like basically obsessed with racing and like missed it so much and realized that that was such a big part of my life. And then now coming back and doing it, it's like, wow, like racing, like true, I can like truly say racing is my passion because of just like everything that comes with it, all that I love about it. Yeah, it's been like a big factor of my life for almost 21 years now. But, um, I do think like taking that time off and like even gaining off tapping, like is what help is helping me now garnish sponsorship or like meeting you, Jamie, when I was doing a professional speaking engagement, you know, at the automotive hall of fame and being able to network and establish these relationships. And now I'm trying to like pass that on to younger generations and mentoring younger girls, because I was taught all this and learned all this stuff at such a young age. It's like, okay, if something ever happens to me, like what I need to like pass this on, like, this is basically free knowledge. Like I need to pass this on to somebody else. Like, what am I going to do? Just keep this with me my <laughs> for the entirety of my life. Right. So now I'm also starting to mentor um, younger girls too. What's your parting advice to other femcanics finding their way in the motorsports industry? And never give up. Roll up your sleeves. Be gritty. Go after it. Don't take no for an answer. I always tell people within the motorsports industry, if the answer answer is no is going to kill you, you're you're in the wrong industry. Find something else because you'll get the answer no more often than not. Um, and just work really, really hard. Like this is this is not. A, I really, there is there really an easy line of work to be in? No, but I feel like motorsports is definitely one of the tougher ones. Um, and so you just have to prove yourself. And so um, work hard, be persistent, and get after it. Taylor Ferns, race car driver and team owner, and I'm a femcanic. Hey, femcanics, this is Jamie B. Thanks for listening to the preview. If you would like to listen to the complete interview, we provided two convenient links below that will link directly to this episode. These links take you to Spotify or Apple Podcasts. You can always go to your favorite podcast listening platform and search for Femcanic Garage. While you're there, if you don't mind, hit that subscribe button and give us a rating. It helps the podcast reach more women. And just know, We appreciate you and your support. This is Jamie B. signing off. Are you a femcanic?